How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to start learning about array fundamentals. In the previous video, we saw that we could initialize an array using a Python sequence, such as a list of integers. For example, we might have an array, which will equal a numpy array. And inside here, we'll just pass in a sequence of integers. And when we run this, what we're going to get as an output is a one dimensional array. In NumPy, we have various ways to access elements from an array. One of the most common ways to do so is by using the integer index of the element we want to retrieve in square brackets. So here, in case we want to retrieve whatever's at the index of two, we can do so by specifying in square brackets two. And when we run this, we're going to get three as an output. In NumPy, arrays are zero indexed meaning that the first element of any array will always start at the index of zero. Now, in the previous lesson, I told you that arrays could not change in size, but that doesn't make them immutable. We can still change the elements at any given index. For example, array at the index of two can now equal 999. And now when we print this array, what we will get as an output is one, two, nine, 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 four, five, and six. So we can still modify an array. We just can't append to it or remove from it. Also, just like with a Python list, you can use slice notation in NumPy. So we can grab all the elements from three onwards using this syntax. And as an output, we will get four, five, and six. Otherwise we can step two, or we can also check what's between one and three. And when we run this, what we should get back is once again, four, five, and six. For this part here, we're using a step of two, so we will get one, three, and five. And the last one is going to return to us two and three, because that's what the slice of one to three refers to. One major difference though, is that slice indexing of a native Python list returns a copy, while in NumPy, it returns a view, which means the slice will still refer to the original array. So first I'm going to show you how it works in Python so that you can see the difference in NumPy. So here we'll create a pi list, which will be of type integer, and that will equal one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then right below that, we will create a pi slice, which will be a list of integer. And here we'll type in pi list and grab everything up until three. Now, if we were to change our pi slice by typing in pi slice at the index of zero equals nine, 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 and of course you can't print this, silly me. But if we were to change that element and then print the pi slice, you'll notice that our slice is going to contain 999 as the first element. And something else that you'll notice is that the original list will remain unmodified. So we'll type in print pi list. And when we run this, it will still contain the values of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this slice over here is an independent copy. Now watch what happens when we attempt to do the same thing with a NumPy array. So here we'll create an array, which will equal a NumPy array, and we'll pass in the values of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we'll create a slice, which will equal the array from zero to three. Now we will refer to the slice and say that at the index of zero, we want to replace that value with the value of 999. Then we will print the array slice. And as an output, we will get 999, two, and three. So far, everything's exactly the same as when we did this in Python using the native list type. But now watch what happens when we print the original array. You'll notice that the original array was modified because here we did not create an independent copy. We created a view. So we are just viewing this data, but this data still refers to the original array. And that's why when we try to modify something within it, it modifies the original as well. Moving on, if you want to initialize an array with two dimensions or higher, you can do it via nested Python sequences. For example, you might have a matrix and that will equal an array with a nested list of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine. And here we have an undercover period, which we're going to replace with a semicolon and everything will work fine. Now, when we print this, what we're going to get as an output is this matrix over here. So here we have an array of two dimensions. Now the dimension of an array will sometimes be referred to as an axis. You'll see why this terminology can be useful down the line as we learn more about NumPy. In NumPy, we also have some special syntax that we can use to access an element in a multi-dimensional array. 
This requires us to specify the index along each axis with a single set of square brackets. For example, I'm just going to open up the terminal because right now we have a very nice representation of our data. And what we want to do is access this element over here. So the way this works is that we need to refer first to the row, which is the first axis, and then to the column, which is the second axis. So to refer to six, we need to type in matrix at the row, which is at the index of one, and the column, which is at the index of two. So here we have the row at the index of one and the column, which is at the index of two. So when we run this, what we will get as an output is six. And I believe we can also format this like this. Nope, it just put it all back. Maybe in PyCharm it works, I have no idea. I thought it would maintain the form, but Z absolutely refused that. So I'm just going to reprint the matrix so that we can see it once again. Now, if we want to refer to the eighth element, we're going to have to count downwards. So zero, one, two. So the first index is going to be two, and then we need to count which column. So here we have zero and one, which means all we need to do is insert one, and this will refer to this element over here now. As you can see, when we run it, we'll get eight as an output. And there's one last thing I want to mention before we conclude today's lesson. Throughout your programming career, you might hear the following mathematical terminology. A zero dimensional array being referred to as a scalar, a one dimensional array being referred to as a vector, a two dimensional array being referred to as a matrix, and a multi dimensional array being referred to as a tensor. And here n is just any number that's greater than two. The NumPy documentation states that it's best that we avoid these mathematical terms when working with NumPy arrays because the mathematical version does not translate perfectly into the NumPy version. Even if the name is technically correct, the operations might be different than the ones you perform in mathematics. For example, matrix multiplication is going to be fundamentally different than array multiplication. And these names are also widely used in other libraries, such as in PyTorch, where the fundamental structure is in fact a tensor. So from this point forward, I will do my best to be as clear as possible and not use these terms that frequently. But in case I do, just know that I'm referring to arrays in NumPy and not to anything related to math or other Python libraries. If I perform matrix multiplication in a future video, I will be extra explicit about which one I'm using. The whole reason I'm mentioning all of this is because I'm human and I make mistakes and sometimes I will refer to a two-dimensional array as a matrix or a one-dimensional array as a vector. The NumPy documentation discourages us from doing that, but again, I'm only human and I make mistakes sometimes, so I just thought I would put that disclaimer on the video.